So Tottenham are the only team left who are undefeated in the Premiership. And Liverpool also use a pressing style that gets them another victory. All of that coming up next. What's up guys and welcome to JNA United, bringing the best in football news, entertainment and games. And today it's the weekend recap, looking back at game week 7 before we go into the international break. But before we get into that, if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button if you're happy to see another weekend recap on the show. And the question of the day is who do you think after seven game weeks is going to win the Premier League? Make sure to have your say in the comments down below. Let's have a conversation about it. And the first thing I want to talk about is Swansea sacking of Francesco Guardolin. Now, you know what I'm like with names, so apologies if I pronounce that wrong. But it seems like a very knee-jerk reaction to me. Swansea have not looked that bad on the pitch. Yes, the results may not be what they're expecting. But if West Ham can put up with the results they've been getting under Slaven Bilic, I don't see why Swansea couldn't have waited a little bit longer. To me, it seemed like they had already decided that as soon as they could get Bob Bradley, who is now the new Swansea City manager, they were going to jump at that opportunity. Bob Bradley seemed to be coming available, so they decided, you know what, the results haven't been that great, let's get rid of the guy that saved us last year despite the fact he's not done that bad yet this year, and bring in our man. Now, apparently they had a relationship with him before he's coming to Swansea City, and their advisor is Landon Donovan as well. So it just feels like it's either a knee-jerk reaction that has been made way too quickly and is going to disrupt their season, or they've been waiting for this chance to bring in Bob Bradley, and they've jumped at the opportunity. But enough about that, and let's get into the weekend recap. And we're starting off with the Tottenham versus Manchester City game. And Tottenham have proven that, again, this year, they could be title contenders. Now, the main thing they've got to do this year is, if they do have as good a season as last year, make sure not to fold and mess it up at the end of the season. Now, the thing is, with their style, a pressing style, they can get tired by the end of the season. And it seems to take some time for their tactic to come into effect at the beginning of the season because they may not be up to match fitness yet. But in the middle of the season, last year, and potentially this year, they could look very good. They bossed Man City, especially in that first half, just pressing as soon as they possibly could and grabbing a two-goal lead, which they then held on to with resolute defending. Now, I've got some examples to show you. And yes, that is the new thing that I'm hoping to bring to Weekend Recap regularly and that's some analysis of the games when i can get the clips okay so the first clip i want to show you you can see here that manchester city have the ball in their possession in their defensive third and are trying to play the ball out like they have done successfully against many teams this season from this freeze frame you can see straight away that delhi ali is going towards the man who is passing the ball and the left winger who i believe is lamella from this freeze frame is going towards the person the ball is going to. Now, there is four Tottenham players here, virtually in the defensive third of Man City, or their final third, trying to press and win this ball quickly to get possession of that ball and play their own game. Now, as you can see, they are forcing Man City to play the ball to the obvious passes. Here, there's only one pass he can make, and Wanyama comes straight in and gets his foot in, winning that ball in Man City's half which automatically gives them the ball and a chance to have a counter-attack. Now here, this bit of defending by Kolarov is just absolutely shocking, but that all came from Tottenham's pressing style, winning the ball quickly, and Man City's defence not being in the right place at the right time. The next clip we have here, Tottenham are actually in possession in the final third and lose the ball, but you can see straight away that as soon as they lose the ball, their first thought is to win the ball back and win it back quickly. Now as you can see, there are two attempts here at tackles that are not successful but you can see that the player that attempted the first tackle his first thought as soon as he missed that first tackle was to get in there and get a second tackle in and the third tackle is successful the ball is now loose and Tottenham are making sure they do as much as possible to win possession of the ball now that they've got it they can counter quickly and it's three on five here but you can see Tottenham building triangles which eventually 
and fortunately for them, sees the ball fall to Son, who can slide it through to Deli Alley. Now those are just two examples of Tottenham's pressing style, and it was this pressing style over the weekend that seemed very successful for two teams, the other team being the second team I'm going to talk about in this episode. After that, Man City did get back into the game, but that was mainly because Tottenham cannot keep that style up for a full game of 90 minutes at the moment. Tottenham kind of sat back a little bit more, still pressing, but not pressing as quickly, and were defensively solid enough to keep Manchester City out. Now you've seen both goals, but there was another chance for Tottenham to make it 3-0. They actually won a penalty in the box in the second half, which Lamella and Hongmin Sun decided to fight over for some reason. Now I don't know which of them is meant to be the penalty taker which is obviously decided by the manager before the match starts but that kind of thing is just a bit childish to be honest I know Hong Min Sun may have wanted to grab a goal and I know Lamella might want to grab a goal as well but come on boys whoever's the chosen taker let him take it don't give him any drama Danny Rose stepped in tried to separate it but because of that that could be the reason that Lamella missed his penalty. We don't know. He might have missed it anyway. But Bravo made a decent save, but it was a pretty poor penalty. Now that leaves Tottenham just one point behind Manchester City now. And it looks like the race is between those two teams and the next team I'm going to talk about. Who picked up a well-deserved victory, but hard-fought victory. Going to Swansea and picking up a 2-1 win. And that was Liverpool. Now it's a cliche saying in football, but this was a game of two halves. The first half, Swansea played really well, which is why it's so surprising to me that they've sacked Francesco Guadalin so quickly into the season, because Swansea looked good in that first half. In fact, Swansea out Liverpool, Liverpool in that first half, pressing really well, winning the ball and quickly making attacks. And it was Liverpool's weakness, their defence, which led to Swansea's goal. Their defence at corners is pretty poor. Henderson lost his man, which was Leroy Fur. Ball goes to the back post. Back post is headed back into the middle and Henderson is nowhere near Leroy Fur anymore who has a simple tap in which puts Swansea 1-0 up going into the break. Now unfortunately in the first half as well Adam Lallana got injured which meant they had to make some changes Liverpool bringing on Sturridge which reshuffled Firmino out to the left and Coutinho dropping into that role Lallana actually was playing before he got injured. Now what I've noticed from watching Liverpool games is Firmino seems very creative when he is that leading striker but seems to lack the opportunities to score once he's playing in that central role but when he got moved to the left he suddenly played a lot better now there's a theory especially in the FPL community that Coutinho and Firmino are like Lampard and Gerrard they can't play together one will play well the other one won't but with Firmino playing on the left and Coutinho playing in a more deeper role Firmino actually had a really good game and it was either a team taught by Jurgen Klopp or they just realised they weren't utilising their tactic to its best ability. But Liverpool bossed the second half, playing their style again and pressing Swansea better than Swansea could press them now that they probably had tired legs. Now the first goal for Liverpool, we've got the clip as well. And it was an attempt at the Swansea defence to push up to stop the Liverpool players staying in the box. But it just went completely wrong for them allowing a very easy goal for Firmino. Now we're gonna freeze this when the free kick is taken and blocked off the wall. You can see Henderson here is gonna put the ball back in. The Swansea players are starting to run towards the edge of the box. The Liverpool players run the other way when the ball is actually played, but are onside when it's played. And because of that, three of them there are actually through on goal with no Swansea player marking them. But an example of Liverpool's press working in the second half here you can see Milner has the ball on the left, who has adapted really well to being a left back actually. And you can see he's played a 1-2 here, and he's tried to cut in, he's failed to cut in, but his first thought when he loses the ball is to try and get a tackle in. This tackle here, there's only one defender in the box, one joins him, pulled back to Mane, and if that pass was better, Mane would have probably scored. So that is two teams that are utilising a press style very well in the Premiership at the moment. The second goal for Liverpool came with a ball in the air in the box. Firmino manages to control it and for some reason Rangel just bumps into the back of Firmino giving Milner his fourth penalty of the season and I have to ask why Milner doesn't take our penalties for England because this season 4-4 four and, four, and he looks composed with each and every single penalty he's taken which has won Liverpool to three points and kept them in the chase for the title. 
Although at the end Swansea had a glorious chance to equalise and make it two all, but Van der Horn just completely scuffs his shot wide when he was through on goal with only the keeper to beat when a great cross came in from Rangel. Now before we continue the weekend recap, we are just going to go to a segment I'm putting on this show now where we go to a clip from another football YouTuber who reviews games and I'm going to kind of try and share the love a little bit. These are people that I watch regularly, whose opinion I value and we're going to Full Time FM's channel where he talks about the Manchester United game against Stoke City. Now he is a Manchester United fan so you can imagine he gets a bit worked up about the way that game went. If you want to watch the whole video, a link will be in the description. And if you enjoy what you see, make sure to subscribe to his channel and let him know in the comments of his video that JNO sent you. Now Mourinho needs to start thinking about this starting 11 and the formation that he's going to use because at the minute he's not got a clue. He fucked up at Chelsea in his second term in the second season and he got sacked. And at the minute he should be doing a lot better at Manchester United. We did good versus Leicester the other week, beating them 4-1. They're the champions. Happy with that. Then we played a team that I have never heard of. Literally never heard of them in my life. And we scraped a 1-0 win. That shouldn't have happened. We should have absolutely battered them. Like we should have done against Stoke today. Absolutely shy. And I am sick of seeing players played out of position. He's done the right thing with Mata putting him in the number 10 position. That was the right thing to do. That is why we're seeing the best out of Mata at the minute. But Rashford... Oh, he's a striker. Why is he playing on the left-hand side? He's so ineffective on the left-hand side. It is shocking. He should be at the top of the pitch with Zlatan. Yeah, he was not happy, was he? But I can completely understand that. Paul Pogba, or Pogba Jemba Jemba, really should have played so much better. Should have got on the score sheet. And another day, Man United probably would have won. But if you don't put your chances away, that's the sort of thing that can happen to you. And... Mourinho really needs to figure out how he can fit all his star players into a formation that will actually work for everyone. So thank you Full Time FM for allowing me to put your clip in this video and we're now going to move on to Chelsea on the road to Hull and Chelsea managed to win this game 2-0 and the main man for them was Diego Costa. Now it's not a saying that I want to repeat too often but this was a game of two halves again. Hull actually held their own in the first half but then in the second half that's kind of where it started to break down for. But before any goals were scored I just noticed during that game that Canty doesn't look the same player at Chelsea. Now this is probably because Chelsea enjoy a lot more possession of the ball than Leicester do so Kante finds himself higher up the pitch more often and he's not the type of player that is successful in the final third. His shooting has no composure. There was a shot he had after Diego Costa had a shot which he blazed over the bar. But when Chelsea did not have possession, Kante started to look like the player he used to be. I think he just needs to adapt his game slightly. Now he's at a bigger club who have a lot more of the ball. But I personally think this version of Kante is not as good as last year's version at Leicester City. But he can get there. I'm not saying Kante is not a good player anymore. That's far from it. I just feel like he needs to adapt. But Costa turned the game with his determination and his forward thinking play. First of all, getting the ball and with determination running through the whole defence. There wasn't much skill there, but he was just determined to keep going. Laid it off for Willian, who had a cultured finish, curled it into the far post. And then Diego Costa Costa pretty much repeated the trick when the ball dropped to him and he did the exact same goal, curling it into the far post. Diego Costa was the man that won Chelsea that game in my mind and if he can just stop getting the yellow cards, he could have a season better than the first season he came to Chelsea. We then move on to a cracker of a game. It was Watford versus Bournemouth and it ended up 2 all. It was an even contest and to be honest, in my mind, either side could have won and I wouldn't have had any complaints about it. I do believe Bournemouth's first, a header at the near post by Callum Wilson. Gomez is going to be disappointed that he didn't stop that. He should have probably saved that, but still it was great play by Bournemouth to get that opportunity, and Callum Wilson showing that he still remembers how to score goals. Watford equalised when Amrabat got the ball out wide, brilliant turn rolling his defender, managed to get into the box, and picked out Troy Deeney, who had an easy finish which is the 99th goal he scored for Watford, showing how important a player he is for that Watford side. I think from now on I'm going to call him Troy Scorpion Kick Dini, because if he'd scored that Scorpion Kick he had an attempt at, I think that would have probably been goal of the season. 
At 1 1, two subs were made. Joshua King came on for Bournemouth, and Isaac Success came on for Watford, and both had impacts on the game. Joshua King had a very direct run at goal and then had a shot from outside the box which was deflected off of Kabul and went in to give Bournemouth the lead at 2-1. Then Success wins a free kick with some quick footwork and he is the one that is on the end of that free kick into the box, heading it into the goal. And from what I've seen, Success needs more game time in that Watford side. Maybe at the expense of Agarlo, who has failed to impress recently. Nowhere near the levels he was at last year. Wilshire should have made it 3-2. He had a glorious chance with the goal gaping, but managed to hit the post. And Stanislas also almost won it with a great free kick, which hit the crossbar. Stanislas has shown that he is really good at long shots and free kicks recently. Not that I was aware of that before this season. Anyway, guys, that is the end of the weekend recap here on JNO United. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. I've been JNO, you've been awesome, and remember, it's all about the game.